Welcome back to our True Blue coverage as we look at this Kentucky basketball team. Now, I don't want to ride a camel and try to imagine riding a camel for your 6'8". Dorian once rode a camel in Egypt, so she tells me. Keith once rode a camel, but it was here in Kentucky. I ain't never riding a camel. That's bad grammar, and I don't care. Think about P.J. Washington. He rode a camel, and he's like this tall. That's part of the story as to what happened in Egypt. The other part is if mom wants to play horse, she still thinks she's a better shooter. PJ says, uh-uh, I'm going to beat mom. And riding a camel, it really wasn't that hard, honestly. It was just scary just being up that high. I would be scared. I mean, probably once you got settled and you were moving, you're okay. But until then, were you going like, what did I get myself into? I mean, when the camel first got up, it's scary because, I mean, you feel like you're about to fall, but you just got to hold on tight and just just, just basically just ride the camel. I mean, it was, it was, it was crazy. Did you enjoy it? Uh, it was different. I mean... It was just, it was great being up that high and seeing everything, but I mean, it was scary. You want to do it again? No, I'm fine. <laughs> Once and I'm good? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> when you tell friends about it, do they think you're nuts or they don't believe you that you actually no, got I on just, a camel? I mean, I show them a the picture and then they believe everything I say after Until that. So then they don't do that? Yeah. Because people are not, come on, man, stop it, you're not with a camel. <laughs> when did you know you were good at this little thing called basketball? Um, honestly, about in like fifth grade. That early? Uh-huh. Why? Uh, I just I just felt the will to win, and uh, I just felt like being a leader. I was a good leader back then, and I just tried to do that every day. How were you, why were you such a good leader back then? Uh, I hated to lose. I hated to lose. In hated anything. to lose? In video games, anything. Did you get that from your dad? Yeah, both my parents, actually. Okay, both your parents. Now, I read somewhere, tell me if it's right or wrong, you have a fear, and tell me if I'm wrong, you have a fear of not accomplishing your goals, and I have found through the years, when somebody has a fear of something and you're talented, that usually pushes you harder to get what you want. Mm -hmm. Am I on the right page? Yes, sir. Tell me about it. I hate, I mean, I'm, I set a lot of goals when I was younger. I wrote out a piece of paper and I stayed it to my wall. And one of those goals was to come here and uh, just be a McDonald's All-American, make it to the Jordan Brand Classic, uh, go to, go to a, pre a prep school, and I went there. And it's just great. I mean, I feel like I accomplished a lot of those, and I still have many more to go. Okay, so when did you put this on the wall about being McDonald's All-American and coming here and that kind of stuff? When did you write those goals? Uh, sixth grade. Wait a second. In sixth grade, you knew you wanted to come here? Mm-hmm. After I seen, honestly, in fourth grade, I knew I wanted to come here. When uh, John Wall came here and just started doing his dance and everything, I fell in love with the program. Did can you do the wall pretty good? Yeah, just, it's just this. <laughs> <laughs> so was it easy for Caliber Cooch? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just easy for him because it was this is my dream school. I mean, I felt like he didn't lie to me at all in the, pro in the process because my whole family liked him. I felt like it was a family atmosphere, and I just wanted to be here. What did you learn from your dad growing up? What did I learn from him? I learned a lot. I mean, I learned a lot about being a man. Uh, just, I mean, it's basically too much to talk about, honestly. Just off the top of your head, the headline, if you say, if you were talking to Dad, thank you for doing this, what would it be? Uh, thank you for pushing me every day. That's pretty cool. What about your mom? Same thing. Thank you for pushing me every day. I mean, they, my dad wanted me to go to Finley Prep at age of 15 in my sophomore year. And I went out there, I went out to Las Vegas by myself. And uh, I never forget, I mean, that was the... It was the best thing for me, and I'm glad I did it. I didn't want to do it at the time, but I mean, it was just, I'm just glad I did it. I'm sure the first week or two, I bet it was kind of freaky when you came comfortable. You'd be probably, you probably came really proud of yourself that mm -hmm. you, you know, you went through that. Uh, the first couple weeks, I wanted to go home, and then it hit me hard when I was walking home from school every day, and I didn't get to see my family, and it just, I mean, it just hurt me, and it made me grow up as a man, and uh, I'm just glad my dad put me through that. I bet it was tough on your mom and dad too, but they didn't want to tell you. Yeah. My, uh, my mom didn't even come on a trip, and uh, she, uh, she couldn't take it. But I went out there with my dad, and uh, I feel like as soon as he left, he started crying a little bit. But after that, I was good. Okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with crying. You cried, or your dad cried, or both of you cried? Uh, I, used to, I used to cry a lot. I mean, the first two weeks, a lot. But after that, I just manned up, and I was good ever since. Okay, once you got past that, you had to feel a tremendous sense of pride and accomplishment because you're 15 years old. See, people sometimes forget because you're tall, you're mature. Well, you're a kid like anybody else. Mm -hmm. I don't mean the word kid in the wrong way. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah. It had to make you feel good what you accomplished. It had to me. I mean, I started washing my clothes by myself, uh, washing dishes, uh, just taking out the trash, just doing everything by myself. And uh, it was just it was just different. I mean, because when you're at home, your mom does all that. But it's just great uh, just being out by yourself. Who's a better shooter, you or your mom? <laughs> My mom's going to say her, but I'm definitely the better shooter. Come on now, if your mom is standing here, 
and you say you're a better shooter, is she going to say, uh-uh? She's going to want to play horse, and then I'm going to have to beat her in front of all y'all. Really? Yeah. You would beat your mom with the TV cameras around here? And horse, yeah. And enjoy every second, too? Yeah. <laughs> Why does your mom think she's a better shooter? I don't know. She just, I mean, she's competitive. I love that about her. I mean, she's always been competitive like that. And uh, in college, she used to, I mean, she averaged like 20 and 10 her senior year, so. She was 20 been, and 10? Mm -hmm. Seriously? That's serious numbers. When's the last time you played your mom and horse? Um, it's been a while, I think. Did you win? Yeah, for sure. I did. You being straight up? Mm-hmm. Would she say the same thing if she was here? No, she's going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> We got 10 seconds. You think about winning a national championship? Oh uh, yeah, that's our goal every day. But uh, every day we just got to stay focused on being better, and uh, eventually we'll get there. It isn't every day, whether it's a man or a woman, you run into a kid who's so goal oriented. Sixth grade, he decides he wants to play here. Sixth grade, he falls in love with John Wall, and now his dream is going to come true.